The periodic table is a graphical representation of all of the elements that have been either discovered or synthesized to date. The elements are arranged from left to right and top to bottom in order of increasing atomic number. Remember, atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of each type of element or atom. On this periodic table, the atomic number is in the upper left-hand corner of every single box. It almost looks like this trend breaks when we're down here in this portion of the periodic table. It looks like we go from 56 directly to 72. In fact, we don't. Elements 57 through 71 have just been dropped down underneath the periodic table. That's just to make it fit better on a piece of paper. We see the same thing for elements 89 through 103. They're just being drawn down below in order to make it fit better. There are a lot of different ways that we can describe the different portions of the periodic table. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the different words that we use to describe the areas of the periodic table. The first thing that I wanna to bring to your attention that's probably the most commonly referred to thing on the periodic table are the groups on, of elements on the periodic table. The groups are the vertical columns which are the up and down portions of the periodic table. So this is one group, this is another group, this is another group, and you get the idea. The groups are the up and down portions. The groups are identified by a number or by a number letter combination, and that's listed up at the very top of each group. Now you'll notice that there are three different titles for each one of these groups. That is because we're currently in the process of switching from one way of numbering our groups to a new way of numbering our groups. So for example, let's focus on this group right here. This particular group by the old numbering system is called group 4A. So if I said, find me an element that is in group 4A, you would look in this particular part of the periodic table and you would just select any one of these elements like carbon. And on this periodic table, group 4A is being represented twice, once with Roman numeral and then once with regular um, number four. That's pretty uncommon. Usually a periodic table just uses the Roman numeral and it doesn't use the number four. The, and this 4A is the old numbering system. The new numbering system is to just use, in this case, the number 14. So if I said, find me an element in group 14, you would look in this group right here and pick anything in this group at all. Or if I said, find me an element in group 17, you would look right here and you'd pick anything from here. Um, and so this, this is the, these are the groups on the periodic table. We also have periods, which are not numbered on this periodic table because they're not talked about quite as often. Periods are the rows, the horizontal rows on the periodic table, and they are numbered one through seven. So I'm filling their numbers in right now. So if I said, find me an element that is in period three, you would choose any one of these guys right here. These are all elements that are in period three. If I said, find me an element that's in period three and group 2A, you'd say, here's period three, and here's group 2A, and magnesium is the one and only element that is in period three and also in group 2A. So that's pretty straightforward. And that's one of the ways that we have for talking about or dividing up the elements on the periodic table. Another way that we classify the elements on the periodic table is based on um, their properties in terms of um, conductivity. So we have metals, nonmetals, and what we call metalloids, which are elements that are kind of in between a metal and a nonmetal. I'm going to start by highlighting the metalloids. The metalloids is a small number of elements, and again, these metalloids are elements that have the properties of both metals and nonmetals. So these are our metalloids. They are um, okay conductors of heat and electricity and just fit somewhere in between the classification of a metal and a non-metal. So we're gonna use this color yellow to refer to our metalloids. On the periodic table, the metalloids serve as the dividing point between the metals and the nonmetals. A lot of periodic tables will have a darkened, jagged line that's dividing the metals from the nonmetals. So somewhere in this area, you'll see a, a, a jagged line 
dividing. That's not present on all periodic tables. For example, this one doesn't have that line. The nonmetals are shown to the left hand, excuse me, the right hand side. So all of these elements out here, these are all the nonmetals. Nonmetals are mostly gases, so our gases are all over here, like oxygen, chlorine, helium, and these are all substances that are very poor conductors of electricity. And then to the left side of the periodic table, we have all of our metals. That, actually, I'm going to redraw that so it doesn't go through my words. Here are the metals. And our metals are substances that are good conductors. One exception to this is hydrogen. Hydrogen is actually a non-metal, so in terms of this classification, it would really be better suited if it was over on the right-hand side of the periodic table. It is definitely not a metal. Um, it does have other reasons that it fits in well with this part of the periodic table, and we'll talk about that in a few videos about why hydrogen is located over here, even though it's actually a non-metal. But hydrogen is the only exception to the placement of the metals, non-metals, and metalloids, so it's not too tricky to remember. And last but not least, we have some special names for some of the elements or some of the, the um, groups of elements on the periodic table. And I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start over on the right-hand side. So in this area, all of the elements that are in group 8A or group 18, these elements are all referred to as the noble gases. So maybe you could be asked a question like, find a noble gas that is in period four. So you go to period four and go all the way over and here's the noble gas that's in period four. And then just to the left of that, these elements right here, these elements are in, in um, group 7a, these are the halogens. And then down in this dropped down portion of the periodic table, all of these elements are, are very metallic. This is where you're going to find all of our really traditional metals like iron and copper, um, titanium, palladium, silver, and gold. All of these are referred to as the transition metals. So this classification is not for a single column, but rather for this whole entire block of elements. And then over here, so we're continuing to move from right to left. We have a special name for the elements that are in group 2A. These elements are called the alkaline earth metals. And then last but not least, group 1A, except for hydrogen, so not including hydrogen, group 1A are the alkali metals. And then last but not least, this portion of the periodic table that is, is dropped down below because it doesn't fit, these elements um, in this particular row right here, these are called the lanthanides. And the one underneath it, these are called the actinides. These names are pretty easy to remember because they're based off of the name of the first element in each one of these rows.